So when it came down to actually formulating and building the crew, Fire Nation crew itself, we knew that we didn't want to have the same layout of just some people in a group dancing and doing whatever, because if we're going to talk about positivity, we're going to talk about representing something that people can feel safe, you know, having their kids find us on social media or, you know, the parents checking in on our posts and stuff and not worrying about language, inappropriate content. We knew that we had to screen. And while we do appreciate great dancers, there are things that we look at, and that includes, you know, social media content. What are you posting? What are you talking about? Um, can you handle being professional? Because the other half of what we do is we represent that as street dancers, you can still have a professional outlook and have the professional ability to conduct your own interviews, have resumes, you know, headshots, video reels, all that stuff done, and make it possible to partner with entities and businesses locally and internationally that never would have considered working with anybody of the street dance background or anything hip hop related in general. So it really started off with first and foremost, the biggest role we had was just make sure A, that you're training. Mm -hmm. Training is huge because if you're representing a style or claiming to represent a style and you're not training in it, you're not ready to perform, you're not ready to represent. And then claiming a style that you don't do, that's a no-no. So if you're not training in it, you're not doing it, learn it first. Yeah. You know, second thing being, of course, positive representation online because we don't want to have it to where, and we've had this happen. Mm -hmm. We have um, schools we work with and, you know, APS School District knows who we are. We've been employed mm -hmm. by them. We have entities like Dance Atlanta where they're sending people to our events and to our performances to check in on, like, are they really that positive? Because they have sensitive audiences and people that follow them that their name is on the line if we're out there acting crazy. And we want to make sure that they can feel safe, not stereotyping hip hop as just inappropriate, vulgar yes. and uncontrollable, because those were never the things that hip hop started off B, it was always something positive. So that really became the first two major things is, can you handle being professional? And if not, we have resources to teach you. All right, and so what we did was, uh, rather what we do is when we decide to vet for people, like we look for people in other places, especially now in other countries and continents and other places in the US, we we look at their pages, you know, we um, we talk to them more often than not. We want to be, they'll reach out to us. Ironically, um, recently it's been happening more often, but more often than not, if we see somebody, we'll both talk about it and then we'll go ahead and just kind of watch their page for a bit. Mm -hmm. What are they putting out? What is the, what does what their bio say about them? What are the what are these what are their stories? What are, what are the things that they actually want other people to see? Because that's what your social media is, mm -hmm. is what you want someone to see about you so or the things you like so we look at those things and it gives us more of an idea but of course that conversation after gives me a better idea of what who it is that you are or at least what you want out of this and i'll even ask them what do you want out of um, being a part of fire nation crew and usually their answer depending on who they are um, it's usually the, they want to expand their horizons they want to be better or they want to be a part of something bigger you know things like that those are very big parts of the process so when we talk to mark in africa he was so ecstatic. He didn't even, he, he didn't know he, that we were going to consider it. Like he was like, what? I just wanted to do a cipher. <laughs> I was like, but I mean, he pretty much has a degree in this. Like he, he has a degree in hip hop. Like that's crazy. I didn't even know this thing. Sure. So, you know, I, I was like, dude, this, this is your wheelhouse. Like you, you are perfect or a perfect fit in your area for Fire Nation. And you are the perfect leader for this. Cause now we know from conversations we had with you and even setting up our own event, you didn't try to take anything over from my event. He could have done that easily. He could have said, all right, well, we on Fire Cypher, well, it's, I can name it something else and just have it over here and, and make it and make it just as big. But he didn't. He respected everything we asked for, everything that was the Way on Fire Cypher, our values. And he just, he did everything that a uh, perfect person for a, a new chapter somewhere else that we can't actually go to see would have been perfect. Not yet. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> not yet. No, I, I mean, at the time, we couldn't actually drive, um, well, not drive, Jesus, <laughs> we couldn't fly out to go there. But now, of course, um, in the next, at least uh, this year or next year, mm -hmm. putting in the air now, just let it flitter around a little bit. We want that to happen. We want to be able to go out there and actually, I actually kind of want to surprise him. Yeah. <laughs> but still, we want to go out there and do this. Same with the Philippines, same with anywhere. Actually, I'm, well, hopefully our crewmate's still in Japan, but if he isn't, still wouldn't go there. But in Germany as well with Corby. Now we definitely want to be able to go to these different places, but having a liaison or someone that is head of the crew there that is trustworthy, that is actually, um, that goes with the values that we have for not just hip hop, but for our actual culture 
and as well as Fire Nation crew, it's perfect. It makes it easier for us to be like, okay, we can take our hands off of this area, but we can check in. Mm -hmm. How's this going? Have you seen any person over here that's, that might be a good, a good person to be a part of this crew? Because like I said, we're taking over the world and I mean it. I mean, in crew structure wise, um, the breakdown, I guess the best way to put it is that we have, we're co-founders. There is no such thing as leader, co-leader, or <laughs> vice versa. We are co-founders, meaning we parent this thing together. We have the exact same judicial power and the exact same decision-making power. Beneath us, we have, well, not even beneath us, but next in tier line, if you're looking from top down, you have Kryptonic, who's in charge. When we're not around or when we delegate him, he handles everything that we need handled on a regular basis. Same thing we do is just the only person he checks in with is us. Um, then we have our core. The core pretty much handles all of our collaborations, outreach, all of our retention efforts, and all of our extensions. That's what core stands for. And that is the crewmates who exemplify everything we stand for that go and find partnerships or build or connect with entities in the community locally and abroad and they bring that back to us and let us know they've curated these things and then we decide whether or not we want to move forward by vote after that we have our basic members and all of our members don't have to be involved on a higher level they can literally just be dancers that hang out with us or are part of our performances or we also have members that don't dance. We have graffiti artists, we have MCs, we have DJs, we have a wide range. And then outside of the crew, we have our affiliates. Mm -hmm. um, prospects are usually whoever it is that we decide we would like to look at bringing in. And they go through the process of being watched for the things we ask for. And then um, going back up to the core level tier is where all of our international um, connections wow. are. We have our crew captains, like the first ever one out there, period. First ever one mm -hmm. was Mael, yep. captain of Fire Nation Crew Philippines. Um, and she didn't even think she was qualified for oh, it, yeah. honestly. But she exemplified, and the reason she was selected was because she, as humble as she is, she came from humble beginnings, her and her mom were fans of what we have going on, and they've been watching and trying to make a difference in their community, as well as taking up for dancers out there who were looked over because they weren't rich, or they didn't go to fancy schools, or lived in areas of the Philippines that were considered to be less than, and they put their hearts in everything. I mean, there's about 14 crew members out there, all under her lead, that they don't like they don't play like they do what they have to do but they always exemplify the highest level of everything we stand for in the crew positivity wise ethics wise virtues wise and that's generally the layout you know and then of course now we have i think we're going on five members for uh, fire nation crew africa um just recently they had a discussion over the weekend to add a new member yep. so that's the general breakdown of how it works mm -hmm. So just like we wanted to branch out to other people for Fire Nation crew and we on Fire Cypher, we also want to branch out and, um, well, we, well, actually we already do, we branch out with other community, um, well, some some events, but also other organizations like uh, Mixed Deity or um, Dance ATL, I think we mentioned them. Um, Red Bull has even been a very big um, sponsor for us as well. But we want to kind of we want to we want to broaden our horizons. You know, we want we want to make sure that the um, the resources that we need are well, well they're, they're obtained because mm -hmm. we have a lot of things that we do, such as the events, um, the We on Fire Cipher, Battle Nation, Cipher Nation, um, and we teach. You know, we teach in schools, we teach in studios, we have our own programs, things like that. So I think some people that I would like to help because we teach children, and I can't give children Red Bull, unfortunately. Um, I would like body armor. I know it, it's something I love. Yeah, I love. Mm -hmm. I love drinking it, especially when I don't want anything like too um, too carbonated. Um, especially in the mornings when I'm not I'm not ready for that yet. Um, I like body armor. I like it. Some it's something that's um, kid friendly. I want that. Um, what about you? What do you think? Honestly, if possible, I mean, I know we talked about energy drinks and things like that, and I remember you mentioned that you wanted to work with Converse. Yes, because you know, girls been wearing that for years. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Vans already has in the circle, mm -hmm. you know, they have a whole thing where they now outreach and they've done some battle events and stuff like that. And I like Vans as well. So if it's possible to work with Vans, I like to work with Vans as well. Um, ironically, one of our crewmates, um, Arthur, Arthur Airbender, he actually pointed out that he wanted us to do something in collaboration with uh, Georgia Public Broadcasting. And then ironically, the 28th Cypher this year happened. Yeah. 
at Georgia Public Broadcasting. So working with them was awesome. I want to do more with them because they do so many other things as well, like the whole Indie Lens pop-up and you know covering stories about people who are doing things in different communities to create awareness. Um, that's probably one of the one of the biggest ones right there. It would definitely be Vans and um, GPB on a bigger scale. So some of the stuff that we like to provide for the kids too, just, just to kind of piggyback off of that. Um, we like to give them things like um, like their first spin cap or things like, say, um, elbow guards, knee pads, things like that. So sports, um, sports stores like Academy, I would love to work mm -hmm. with them. Or even um, Under Armour. I love Under Armour. Armour. Like, they're, it fits so nice. Mm -hmm. It fits, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It fits nice. It's thick. It, it, has, um, it has good resistance against um, burns, scrapes, things like that. Because when you're spinning on your head and when you're spinning on the ground, you don't want to lose skin. I have too mm -hmm. many tattoos for that. I pay for those. Um, so I think those might be good, good fits as well. Yeah. As well as, um, you know, Snipes just officially started really expanding stores in America. Mm -hmm. It's a German outfitter that is now here. They're also known primarily for, you know, like the Pro Breaking Tour events or Battle of the Year, which is one of the um, more prominently known uh, international battle events. But just having them not only as a clothing sponsor, but also being able to provide resources, tools, and yeah. things tailored specifically to that because, you know, bringing in the Y factor, we do teach a lot of classes and if there's anything else we're known for outside of just being, you know, dancers that are, you know, seen here, you know, doing things there or having the cipher is that we're known for educating. And that's not just, you know, the kids classes because we have classes all over Atlanta. We yeah. work with um, like you're working with NBAF right now. Mm -hmm. so you're teaching classes in a middle school. Um, we partnered with different dance studios that are privately owned, including uh, Generations Dance Academy out in Bremen, um, Artistry and Dance over in uh, the Covington area. There's plenty of them. And then there are some that even bring us in on retainer to do workshops and clinics and stuff like that. But um, having those classes, having those layouts and those resources helps because then the next step is, of course, curating our own facility. Because like we said before, it's not just we don't just do one thing. Yeah. Um, with those classes, we educate kids and adults in the foundations of street dance styles like locking, breaking, popping, as well as other styles of dance. Because you actually teach, um, you're teaching uh, contemporary right now. Yeah, I'm teaching contemporary yeah. this year. <laughs> so you have styles like that, and then we also help with what is known as artist prep, which brings in another aspect of what we've partnered with We on Fire Cipher, which is a program I created called Battle to Business Mentality, which was literally, I took my whole notes and story of how I turned what I did as a dream and a passion into a career. And I've been working on it for a while, but it has a resource center that's online that's free. And it provides everything from how to's and how to build a resume, um, templates for all kinds of uh, different contracts and agreements you can have, as well as a guide that I wrote on what you can do to get started with your career and the steps you can take to safely curate those experiences without not knowing where to start. Because I feel like part of the no, res the no resource type thing is that some people don't know where exactly to start when it comes yeah. to these things. And then they trust someone else to take care of it for them. And we know that that can either work out or it can't, and we want to eliminate that. So that's part of the education. Um, I think you already touched on a lot of our outreach events because um, from the education of these classes, we want to give them incentives, exactly. whether it be performances, you know, where they can come out and perform with us or perform on their own and get opportunities from actual people in the community to having positive extracurriculars like the Battle Nation Adult Series, Cypher Nation Kids Series, which, you know, different locations, things like that with a grand championship. Um, of course, community ciphers and even international opportunities like what uh, Mark is doing with Hit Beat Africa. Exactly. So with all of this education being done in the schools, we have a lot of um, key points to hit. And we want to make sure that kids understand that you can come to our events or an event that we know of, that we host, the people that we partner with and have, say, um, what, what they like to do, like when they have a live interview, they have you actually going through the work doing the work and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So we let we make sure that they understand that you have a chance to, if you're interested in theater, or if you're interested, interested in lighting, or hey, you're interested in, in setting up a table, how do I do that? Or how do I get to this? Or how do I, all those hows are what we try to make sure that we can have the answer to. So we make sure that they can come to these events to do this. They can be here and do this. They can talk to that person and have that. And we want to make sure that we educate them properly in that, those things. So it's not just we're teaching them about hip hop. We're teaching them about entrepreneurship. We're teaching them how to 
build themselves into the creative community to get to where they want to get to. So partnering with other people actually helps that immensely. Immensely, like it helps um, give us the resources we may need because everything happens. It's just us. Mm-hmm. It's just us. <laughs> and I mean, and we we come out of pocket and we we don't do it begrudgingly. Like we do a lot. We dash. We do you know odd jobs and stuff because we have skills outside of just dancing, and that's why we also promote being mm-hmm. multifaceted. <laughs> But we even have our, our, our uh, GoFundMe page going. Oh, yeah. It's been going for about a year and a half now, two years. And it's not because we're just sitting around, you know, like, yeah, we got all this. It's not like that at all. Like, we don't have all of that. And I know that being on social media, people see us doing all this stuff and they can think, oh, they, they got it. They're good. They're, we they're we actually don't like, even ask for much at all. And yeah. it's not because we're rich. It's because, well, we have a free cipher for a reason. <laughs> you know, I don't want people to have to, to, to spend too much right. on something that they actually enjoy. So we don't ask for much. If, if anything, it's just like when we work with um, the Gateway Center, mm. we're still working with them. Actually, it's a center here in Atlanta, it's on Prior Street, it's for homelessness. It's for homeless men in particular, although women can come in there as well, but they do have a facility for them to get dressed, shower and all that stuff. We want to bring clothes to them. You know, we want to give them um, the, what they call snack bags and whatnot. So we want to be able to give these things more often so that, um, for one thing, it's not so I don't feel bad or anything, but it's because there are people that need it. There's too many homeless people out here that don't have nice things. And I think that does not help the mental about it. So if you're out there, you wear eight rags, you're like, oh, I'm homeless. I'm not going to get, get out. It's because you have all these bad things around you. And mm-hmm. I want to help with that.